In 2004, researchers at the University of Regensburg did something unusual. They took a group of adults who had never juggled before, taught them the basic three-ball cascade, and asked them to practice for just three minutes a day. Then they scanned their brains. What they found shocked the neuroscience community. After only 30 days, these beginners' brains had physically changed. The gray matter in their mid-temporal area and left posterior intraparietal sulcus had expanded by 3 to 5 percent. This wasn't just theory about neuroplasticity potential. This was visible, measurable brain growth captured on MRI scans. In adult humans who simply learn to throw balls in the air. And here's what makes this relevant to you. You don't need to master juggling. You don't need to join the circus. The brain changes happen whether you succeed or fail. The attempt itself is what rewires you. Why juggling is a brain hack. So why juggling? Why not chess or piano or learning Spanish? Because juggling does something unique. Most skills train one brain area. Juggling simultaneously forces your entire brain to coordinate in ways it never has before. When you juggle, your visual cortex tracks multiple objects moving through three-dimensional space. Your cerebellum predicts trajectory and timing with split-second precision. Your motor cortex coordinates exact hand movements. Your basal ganglia maintains rhythm and pattern. All at once. All the time. In 2009, Dr. Heidi Johansenberg's team at Oxford discovered something even more interesting. Juggling doesn't just build gray matter in isolated regions. It strengthens white matter, the connections between brain regions. It's not just building muscle in one area. It's upgrading the highways between areas. And here's why this works. Juggling is profoundly unnatural for humans. We didn't evolve to throw and catch three objects simultaneously while maintaining a continuous pattern. Your brain has no pre-existing template for this. That awkwardness, that frustration you feel when you start, that's exactly what triggers neurogenesis. Your brain is forced to build new neural pathways because the old ones simply don't have instructions for this task. The 30-day protocol. So what does the actual timeline look like? Week one is what researchers call the cascade phase. You start with two balls in one hand. Your goal isn't perfection. Your goal is repetition. The Regensburg participants practiced just three minutes daily. Your brain doesn't need hours of practice. It needs consistent exposure. The frustration you feel during this week that's your prefrontal cortex working overtime to encode new motor patterns. Every awkward throw is your brain writing new code. Week two, you add the third ball. This is the awkward phase. And you'll drop it constantly. You'll feel incompetent. But Stanford research shows this struggle phase is when your brain releases the most BDNF. Brain-derived neurotrophic factor. That's your brain's growth hormone. It floods your neural tissue during challenging learning tasks. Every dropped ball is your cerebellum recalculating physics and refining predictions. The struggle isn't a sign you're bad at this. The struggle is the mechanism of growth. Week 3, something shifts. Usually around day 15 to 18, something clicks. You're not consciously thinking about individual throws anymore. The pattern starts to feel automatic. This is your basal ganglia taking over. This is procedural memory forming in real time. The same system that learned to ride a bike, to type without looking, to drive while thinking about other things. By week four, by day 30, brain scans show maximum gray matter increase. But here's the fascinating and slightly terrifying part. The Regensburg team did a follow-up study. They found that if you stop practicing, the gray matter decreases again within three months. The brain is ruthlessly efficient. Use it or lose it isn't a motivational poster slogan. It's neuroscience. Your brain constantly evaluates. Are we still using this skill? No? 
Then we're reallocating these resources. What this means for your intelligence. Now, you might be thinking, okay, so I can grow my brain by juggling, but I don't need to juggle in real life. What's the point? Here's where it gets interesting. Research shows that juggling significantly improves mental rotation, the ability to manipulate objects in your mind. Mental rotation is one of the strongest predictors of mathematical ability, problem-solving skills, and spatial reasoning. The connection makes sense. When you juggle, your brain is constantly predicting trajectories, calculating timing, and tracking multiple objects through three-dimensional space. These are the same cognitive processes you use when solving geometry problems, reading maps, or designing anything that requires spatial thinking. This skill is the engine behind STEM success. It's exactly what engineers, architects, and surgeons use to visualize complex structures. Your brain doesn't just get better at juggling. The skills transfer. But the bigger picture is this. The Regensburg experiment proved something revolutionary for neuroscience. For decades, the scientific consensus was that adult brains could strengthen existing neural connections, but couldn't grow new gray matter. Adult neuroplasticity was considered limited, modest, incremental. Juggling shattered that assumption. These researchers proved that adult human brains can grow measurable new gray matter in weeks not years. And if juggling can do it, what else can? What other simple, accessible activities are we overlooking because they seem trivial? The practical reality check. Here's the practical reality. You don't need to become a master juggler. The brain changes occur during the learning phase, not the mastery phase. Start tonight. Get two tennis balls and pull up a YouTube tutorial. Practice for three minutes. Tomorrow, do it again. By day 30, your brain will have measurably changed. Whether you can juggle perfectly or not, just 90 minutes of total practice spread across a month equals a permanent upgrade to your brain's coordination and spatial processing systems. The return on investment is absurd. The Regensburg researchers concluded their study with this statement. The adult human brain remains highly plastic and adapts readily to environmental demands. Translation You're not stuck with the brain you have. You can physically rebuild it. Three minutes at a time. Juggling proves something profound about human potential. Your brain is more malleable than you think. More adaptable than you've been told. More capable of change than you believe. The question isn't whether you can change your brain. The question is, what are you going to build?